For any Xbox or PlayStation codes or cheap games on any platform, use the referral link in the description. It'll take you to G2A.com. Use the promo code CHEZ over there and you'll get yourself 3% cash back. For all No Identity merchandise, hats, hoodies and t-shirts, follow the link in the description down below to the No Identity Fan Fiber website. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 18 of the Southampton Career Mode series here on FIFA 18. We have Stoke at home to start us off today. There are 11 games to go in the Premier League season. We are still in the relegation zone, although only by a singular point. However, Liverpool do have a game in hand. Our, today, our, our today's... Today's first opponents are Stoke, who are currently 13th and, crucially, only three points above us. So if we can win, and win by a, a decent margin, two or more goals then we'll actually leapfrog them in the table and at least certainly get ourselves out of the relegation zone and maybe even fly further up the league. We're still only six points off eighth-placed West Brom. It's so tight in the midfield in the uh, in the Premier League table right now. It looks like Huddersfield and Newcastle are doomed. Newcastle, seven points... Sorry, Huddersfield, seven points adrift. Newcastle, 11 points adrift of safety. So it looks like those two are going down, but any number of 10 teams could yet be relegated in that third spot. Hopefully it's not me! <laughs> We've Stoke first, then Burnley, and then Newcastle, which I can't not win, surely. Um, saying that, I'll probably lose 5-0 now. So we'll start with the game against Stoke. Aim today is just to get out of the relegation zone. I'm not really setting a target for points tallies at the minute. I'm just wanting to improve my league position. So long as my league position improves, I don't care. Drop the video a like if you enjoy. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any further content. Check the channel page for anything you may have missed. Episodes 1 and 2 of the new Youth RTG have gone live over the weekend. But for now... Oh, Stoke, Burnley, Newcastle. 4-2-3-1 for Stoke. Butland in goal. Shakiri, Afli and True Promoting sat behind Mamboram Juf. I can't remember what happened last time we played Stoke. I seem to remember us winning in the league and the cup. Stavlidis, early ball in. Oh, I feel I actually got to that head of Wesley Hurt. Thankfully, Anana was there with a comfortable save. Hopefully, he can have a better couple of games today. Well, he didn't exactly have a bad debut. It's just that, that one mistake that cost me the game against Brighton. Absolutely killed me off. Cedric, play this inside here. Charlie Austin's in a bit of space. First touch, trying to get it past Kurt Zuma, but can't do so. Here's Quincy Promise. Nice turn. Quincy. Maybe, oh, look to Bender. That's what I was trying to do. Charlie Austin goes down, but it's not a penalty. Jeff Cameron. Over the top looking for Mambram Juf. Mayoshi to gets there. Will Prowse will pick up the loose ball and we'll go for a counter-attack. Fallow look inside. Will Prowse get it across here to Lamina. Charlie Austin is there. We'll spread it across this right-hand side. This is a, a good counter-attacking move. Will it end in a chance on goal? It's Charlie Austin. It could well find James Will Prowse. Not only will it end with a chance on goal, it will go into the back of the net. I'd say low and hard from uh, James Will Prowse, but it wasn't necessarily struck that cleanly. He scuffed that into the bottom corner. Not much pace on it, but it beats Jack Butland. We lead by a goal to nil. Good. Red. Forward there to Affleck. I was going to jump in with Romeo there, but I had to pull out of the challenge, otherwise he'd have given away a foul. Ambram Juf across here to Shakiri, Back to Jeff Cameron. It's good football from Stoke. And he's got an eternity there. And Wesley Hurt cuts that out just in time. Because they were about to have a really good opportunity there. Turn here with Romeo and give that to James Will Prowse. We could actually have a chance of our own. Going the other way now. Uh, Quincy Promise is there. I don't know who to pass to, to be honest. So I'm just going to wait and look back to Lamina. James Will Prowse does well. Charlie Austin out of his feet. And the shot. Rocket. I do like the way Charlie Austin's right foot just pile drives the ball into the back of the net. I think that's his 27th goal of the Premier League season. We'll see from the little graphic in a minute. Uh, yes, 27 goals in the Premier League this season for Charlie Austin. If we stay up, it's because of him. Cedric forward to Thomas. In there's Charlie Austin. Mario Lamina driving forward. And driving forward indeed. And there's Quincy Promise. Could this be three? We're running right. 3-0 in the 29th minute. We got a good victory against... I'm pretty sure we got a good victory against Stoke last time we played them in the league. I know we beat them 2-1 in the cup, but I'm pretty sure we got like a 4 or 5 goal victory, didn't we, in the first game against them in the league? Uh, obviously on for a repeat of that here if we can keep this up. 3-0 in the opening half an hour. It's exactly the sort of result that we needed. 
Gomez. It's Romeo that's making the run forward. And I'm looking for He's brought it down. Oh, and he got to the shot as well ahead of the keeper. It's going to be a corner, I think. Jack Butland does just enough. Quincy Promise will whip the ball into the box. Up goes Maya Yoshida. Straight down the throat of the keeper, though. This ball over the top. Ramji wins the header and Afolo plays it into Shakiri. Stoke with a chance to get one back and Nana with the save. Why he took that on his right, I'm not sure. He had the space and time to move on to his left there, Chad and Shakiri. Ibrahim Afolo will take the corner. It's a decent delivery. Wesley Hurt heads away. I'd like to get Nana a clean seat if we can. Out to Chu promoting. Nice tackle by Cedric. Out to Quincy Promise. Oh, just the drop of the shoulders, enough to send the defender there. And Bruno Martinsini has been pulled out of position. Charlie Austin in space. A CP foul at the back post. That was a drilled cross, not a shot. He just hit it that poorly. That should be 4-0. I can't quite believe I haven't been able to find Bufal at the back post there. Promise. Turns well. Cut it in there to James Ward-Prowse. Lay it back to Maya Yoshida. Go to Charlie Austin. Then to James Ward-Prowse. And maybe back to Charlie Austin again. Try and finesse this one. Okay. Note to self, Charlie Austin can power them in, but he can't finesse them in. At least not on that example, anyway. That was pretty bad. Shakiri down the line to Manbram Juf. Lays it back inside to Afalai. Oh, side, net side netting only for Ibrahim Afalai. Not far away at all. And Nana's still on for that clean sheet. Fred. Cameron. Afalai. Juf. Oh, nicely done by Maya Yoshida. Quincy Promise could be in behind here if we can time the pass right, which we've done well. Good weight on it too. Is the angle there? I think it might be. It is. 4-0. Lovely finish from Quincy Promise. It's going to be a solid victory here for us against Stoke, which will certainly take us out of the relegation zone because it will be Stoke that will go above. What happens with the other teams between us and Stoke, I'm not sure, but he's 13th goal of the league season for Quincy Promise. Good solid signing uh, for us. We have a 4-0 lead with 15 minutes to go. Juf turns well into Afolite. Shakiri's there. Dusan Tadic on his shoulder. Back to Jeff Cameron. Intercepted by Cedric. And I think that might be the final whistle sooner rather than later. It does look like we are going to get uh, a Nana a clean seat in the Premier League. And indeed there is the final whistle. That's exactly what we needed at this stage of the season. And with Burnley and Newcastle yet to play... If we can get maximum points and good wins in all three games, this might well be the single episode that saves our Premier League status. I just need to keep it up for the rest of uh, today's episode and think, wow, wow. Told you the table was tight. That one win has moved us all the way up to 13th in the table now. Although we have played a game more than everybody else in the league. Literally everybody else in the league. So I could yet drop back down to 18th. Let's see what the table looks like by the time we get to Burnley. Is anyone playing on the Wednesday or else midweek? Or have we just played a game extra and then having a weekend off at some point when I thought there was an international break? Uh, he's still 13th. Okay, so we've got Burnley and then we've got a week off here. Presumably then this week is an international break or one of these two weeks is where we should... Oh no, because we've got a game on the Monday. I don't know then. Maybe we've just got a week off somewhere. I've played an extra game than everybody else, but I quite like being 13th. I feel almost... Dizzy because we're so high in the league table. Two banks of four for Burnley. Tom Heaton starting goal, not Nick Pope. But it's a 4-4-1-1 rather than a straight 4-4-2. With Chris Wood leading the line. That's me, that is. Here's Nkudu. In there to Ayub. Just using his strength to hold off James Ward-Prowse. Nice ball out wide to George Kevin and Kudu again. Holds off Oriol Romeu. Here's Wood. Cross could come in maybe. Just a little short pass to Hendrick. Oof, not far wide from Ayub at all. Good move from Burnley. They played well against me in the first game, Burnley. So I'm expecting a tough test again. But hopefully we can come away with another victory. If we can just keep winning at this stage of the season. Because we do still have like Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester City yet to play at the end of the season. So... Uh, picking up points in games like this and the one against Newcastle is vital considering I'm probably not going to get any points from a number of games between now and the end of the season. At least three of my remaining uh, ten games I'm expecting to lose and probably lose heavily as well. So getting results in games like this is very important. Corner for Burnley. 
George Kevin and Kudu to stand it into the box. It's, oh, it's a great header by Long. And I think it was Bertrand that got that away rather than the goalkeeper. What a header from the corner. But now, can we catch him on the counter-attack? Justin Clover trying to race away from Long. I don't know how fast he is. Evidently not fast enough to deal with the pace of George, uh, George Kevin and Kudu. Justin Clover, a sequence he promised at the back post. Taylor gets there and Promise can't. Very, very nearly. 1-0 Burnley there. They've been the better side in the opening 20 minutes or so. Wood squeezes it. He's offside there, the extra man. But Nkudu will just drive around the outside and use that pace. Nice ball in. Wood, what a save by Anana with his feet at the near post. He's asking where his defenders were and he might well because they were absolutely nowhere to be found. Nkudu with a delivery. Anana can't get there. Wood with a header. I think the goalkeeper got stuck on a defender there. But thankfully for me, my namesake striker headed well over the bar. Six shots for Burnley so far. I don't think I've had more than one. I haven't even had any. That sums up the opening 25 minutes, doesn't it? Hendrik across to Ayub, out to Nkudu. And there is the first goal of the game. And to be fair, it's fully deserved. Great finish. Burnley have been all over me from the very first whistle in this one. I haven't been able to deal with them whatsoever. Great finish into the far top corner. Nkudu makes it Burnley 1, Southampton nil after 25 minutes. Prowse out to Justin Clivert. Well, Prowse is there again. Knock that back to Justin Clivert. Charlie Austin's made the run, but because Charlie Austin's over here, that means no one is in the middle. Give that back to James Ward Prowse. Quickly across here to Pierre Emil Hoiberg. Good footwork. Just trying to hold off the man that's with me. May Ward Prowse. Charlie Austin's there. Come on, Charlie. Oh, that's my first chance of the game. That took a big deflection or cannoned off the defender as he blocked it. And it was really simple for Tom Heaton to gather up. This game, or this episode to this point, sums up how inconsistent we've been all year. I batter Stoke by four goals to nil and then have one shot in the entire first half against Burnley away from home and I'm one nil down. Could you get more polar opposite? They're doing to me what I did to Stoke. The only difference is that I was actually putting the ball in the back of the net on a more regular basis than they have against me here, unless this flies in, in which case I'm two goals down. But luckily it hasn't, but it still could. Are you been? Jack Stevens will clear, and there's the half-time whistle. Much improved, 45 needed, second time around. Nice ball down the line. He's onside here, Wood, and into the middle it comes. Pierre only just got there, and I thought the defender was uh, going to be caught out by the attacker that was just in front of him. And caught out there with Romeu by the man on the ball. And into Hendrik. Good block by Jeremy Pio, who's there again. And Kudu. Oh, it's a penalty, isn't it? I thought I'd read the turn inside, so went for the tackle. Still mistimed it, unfortunately. He turned inside there, and I read it, and went to step for it. But the touch was a lot heavier than I expected it to be from Nkudu. Ball went past me. Man didn't. Hit the floor. Penalty. Chance for Chris Wood to make it. Burnley 2 as they bring on Samu Castillejo. Saved by Onana. We are still in it. Lovely stop by the goalkeeper as they bring on Samu Castillejo, who's an extremely good player. I'm surprised that he's come to Burnley of all places. But, oh, that was brilliant, Ryan. Well done. We've saved a pen. Can we build on that and go and get ourselves an equaliser? And Kudu with the corner. I can't afford to go 2-0 down. I need to get at least a point from this. Get rid of it, please. It's away at least. Long down the line to Castillejo back. Romeo intercepts down the line. And now a counter-attack is on. Justin Clivert with a turn. Charlie Austin looking to break in behind. But with something like 68 pace, I don't fancy him. Justin Clivert will just knock this back here to Hoiberg. Who turns well. We'll look for Justin again. Good touch. Justin Clivert. There's the equaliser we've been after. I think only my second shot of the entire game. And we're level. Oh, all about Justin Clive at that breakaway. The pace and finding the right pass for the 1 2. Good touch and turn in the box, too. Pirimo Hoiberg getting it into him, takes it past the defender and then tucking it home nicely. Get in. Over into Charlie Austin. Spins well and lays it back to Walt Prowse. Waiting for Charlie to make me a decent run, which he hasn't. He's just kind of stood there, but we will find him. And here's Quincy Promise, and that's a good turn as well. Promise in the box. Quincy Promise to perhaps... Oh, that came off Austin, did it? No, off a defender. I thought it had been blocked by his own teammate there. James Will Prowse with the delivery. That's a good corner. Who's underneath that? Castillejo. Another chance to deliver from out wide. If I can somehow get a win from this, I'd be delighted. Underneath this would be Jack Stevens, but unfortunately... Oh, Wesley Hurts! 
It's again! No, oh, I can't get to it. Wow. Prowse out to Ryan Bertrand. And inside there to Ward Prowse again. Charlie Austin. I need runners. I don't have them, so Charlie Austin's going to have to look to pile drive one again. But Tom Heaton saves. Wasn't the best of accuracy from Charlie Austin. Five out. There's Austin. Well, Prowse has kept that run going. We'll go centrally here to Hoiberg. And the run of... Oh, the run of Quincy Promise drew the defenders away. It's headed back and Tom Heaton will give us a throw or a corner. It's a corner. Two and a half minutes to be played. James Will Prowse towards the near post. Quincy Promise underneath it! Off the line by Taylor. Think it was going wide. I think. Don't concede on the counter-attack chairs. Ashley Barnes too strong for Ryan Birch and dinks it across. Please get there, Jeremy! Thank you. Heads it home. Oh, nearly won it at one end and then could quite easily have ended up losing it at the other. That was a terrible throw from Anana, not, getting, not getting enough distance on it. Nice ball by Cassier, who is Ashley Barnes. I still could lose it! I'm going to. And who's the goal scorer? Chris Wood! I've played myself. Burnley 2, Southampton 1 in the last minute. And the guy with my name is the one to get the goal. They deserve the win. I can't deny them that. It's just particularly frustrating the manner in which it's come about. It's going to be Burnley 2, Southampton 1 here at Turf Moor. And unfortunately, that might see oh, our league position drop from 13th back down the table again. Really, really annoying this. May even end up being 3. No, that will probably be full time. And is right. Newcastle next. Bottom of the league. Terrible season for them. A must win. Similar formation from Newcastle to the one that played against us for Burnley. In fact, identical. 4-4-1-1 with Perez behind Slomani. A strong physical uh, lump of a striker up top for them. As was the case for our previous opponents. But I've got one of my own and he's the league's top goal scorer. So we'll rely on him, hopefully. Promise. Switch it across to Ryan Birch and we'll go down the line to Sofia and be fail. Best of first touches, but to be fair, it wasn't the best of passes. Romeo will turn inside. But for Charlie Austin first, actually. And we use the runner, Lamina, as a decoy, but then actually use it. And Mario Lamina, the second attempt, oh! Flashes it over the top of the bar. If he'd have kept that down, maybe the keeper would have saved it, but still, it would have stood a better chance of going in. Hopefully, it's a sign of things to come, though. Us being positive and moving forward. It took about 42 minutes for me to have a shot on goal in the Burnley game. So, to get one after just seven here fills me with a little bit more confidence. We might actually be able to get ourselves a win from this. And a win is exactly what we need. Again, looking for Mario Lamina. Who went to Charlie Austin, but he wasn't able to turn it home. It's headed by Romeo. Lamina brings it down. Out quickly to Quincy Promise. I'm just going to drive forward here, although as a cave is staying with me well. Inside to Lamina. Ward Prowse is there. And I'll look for him. James Ward Prowse. Good save by Carl Darlow. We have been training Ward Prowse's finishing, but that was on his left foot. He'll deliver the corner himself. That's a good delivery too. The keeper will come to punch, so Hurt will look to find a teammate. He does. It's only his centre-back partner, though, in Maya Yoshida. But for James Will Prowse, he will find him through that gap there. It's Charlie Austin. Someone's on the floor. Hurt in the middle. It looks like Mario Lamina. He's up on his feet, though, unable to carry on, thankfully. But half an hour in, we are still looking for the first goal of the game. Got a corner. I tried to whip the last one. I'll try and float this one and see if that helps. Wesley Hurt knocks it down. Mario Lamina. Oh, cleared away by Isaac Hayden. We beat the goalkeeper. But Lamina, who's carrying a knock, very nearly able to give us a 1-0 lead there. Quincy Promise is trying to find some space here on the edge of the box. Get it to Charlie Austin. Around the corner looking for Oriol Romeo, whose shot is really poor. We've been the better team here. But unlike Burnley in the first game, who were the better team and scored to take the advantage, I haven't been able to make that... Dominance pay to this point. We've had a, a handful of chances. Haven't yet found the back of the net. James Will Prowse will turn. Look for Charlie Austin. We might now find the back of the net. Good save by Carl Darlow. Two and a half minutes to go to the half time. Will Prowse will deliver. Oriol Romeo is up. It's going to drop here to Sofiane Buffel. Try a little bit of footwork. And then again, and that's not worked at all. In there to Will Prowse. Poke it long ahead of Buffel. And then just look to race away. I've got DeAndre Edlin chasing me down. He's very, very fast. I see James Ward Prowse then. I'll put it back to him. Ward Prowse, 1 0 Southampton. Perfectly executed. Oh, in first half stoppage time, we take the lead. Lovely breakaway. You can see the space for James Ward Prowse there. The number 14, Isaac Hayden, didn't react in time. And it was a simple finish. Just had to get it on target. Straight down the middle of the goal. Straight in front. Free kick for Newcastle. 
Fortunis and Matt Ritchie stood over it. It's going to be Fortunis to take it. That's a great free kick. I'm totally too sure how Anana got across that and held on to it. It looked almost as if he caught it one-handed, but I'm glad he did stop it because that would have been a hell of a free kick. Bertrand down the line to Buffal. Can we catch them on the counter from their own set piece to maybe go 2-0 in front? Buffal just going to keep driving here. I'm going to dig this over the top looking for Quincy Promise to then knock it back into the middle, but Isaac Hayden's too physically strong and tall for Quincy Promise to get the ball into the box. That's a lovely ball around the corner here to do. Santadic, who will turn, pull it back. That was meant for Charlie Austin, but he's changed Ward Prowse on the ball. That's a nice turn. Ward Prowse! Straight to the keeper. Oh, it's a great through ball to Matt Ritchie. That's oh, a nice block, but it's going to drop to Slimani. I thought that had nestled in the near post for a minute. Side netting only. Isaac Hayden going off, and looks like Modi Army coming on. Big, strong, physical, powerful presence in the middle, Modi Army. He'll be hard to deal with. Yedlin. Fortunis. Good turn. Trying to shake him off. That's going to be a comfortable header for a man at the back post. And Matt Ritchie nearly scores, but Onana does well to bat it away. Fortunis had a great free kick early on. Can he deliver a great corner now? Yes, he can, but Maya Yoshida heads away. And as far as Chancel and Bemba, didn't fancy him shooting from 25 yards, to be honest. Marcelo Bemba turns, Romeo tackles, counter-attack with one centre-back out of position. Able to drive inside, still got Moji on my shoulder and Mbemba gets back to make up for his mistake. That is superb defending. Austin, who fell on the overlap, driving forward, try a little turn to get into the box. Okay, I don't know what the defender was doing there, but we'll lay this cross here to Tadic. No matter how hard I've tried, I cannot get this second goal. If we get a single goal to nil victory, I will be pleased. But for goal difference's sake, I wish it had been a couple more. Just got to make sure we don't actually concede ourselves. And we do end up winning the game, so we can't get too carried away just yet. There's still uh, three minutes of added time, and I've given that away. When this header, please. Cedric's done well. Dusan Tadic just knocked this inside here to Ori Romeo, and we will keep possession. And as such, we'll get the result that we're looking for. If we'd have just been able to beat Burnley, or at least take the point from Burnley, then we might well have found ourselves in a better league position, and Tadic can't quite get on the end of that, but I think it might be time for the referee to blow his final whistle, and indeed it is. Six points today. Decent haul. Decent haul. Two wins from three. Could have been seven points, but I didn't deserve anything from the Burnley game, if I'm being completely honest with myself. So... Uh, fair play to them for getting the victory. But what does that do for our league position? There are nine games to go now, I think. In a, no, eight games to go in the league season for us. Yes, eight. We're on 30 points. We're back up to 13th again. But we've played a game more than a number of other teams around us. Fixture list seems to be all over the place at the minute with the way uh, other teams aren't necessarily playing their games at the same time as me. So I will advance as far as the next game, which... Oh, how long are you out for? Mario Lamina's out for three weeks. Okay, that's going to be a little bit of an issue, but Pierre-Emil Hoiberg can step in, or maybe even Dusan Tadic can step in. A match reschedule. We've got a game against Swansea next. That will be the first game of tomorrow's episode. Swansea 14th in the league table. And still, not everybody's played their, um, their 30th game, but we are in 14th position now. Two points above the drop zone, but Liverpool are below us with a game in hand and level on points. Or oh, Sorry, a point below us then Leicester and Stoke are both two points below us and also have a game in hand so we could drop to 17th again and would see Swansea uh, drop into the relegation zone should those teams below us win their games in hand and we have Swansea next huge game that will be for tomorrow thank you very much for watching drop the video like if you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't I'll see you next time